This video is an overview of the thermodynamics chapters from the Chemical Thermodynamics and Kinetics playlist. So we start off by looking at gas properties, by looking at the ideal gas equation from general chemistry, PV equals nRT, or PV bar equals RT, where V bar is the molar volume of the gas. We can then extend that to the van der Waals equation of state, which includes a parameter for the attractions between molecules, A, and the repulsions between molecules, B. And we also have the virial equation of state where PV bar over RT, represented as Z, the compressibility factor, is a Taylor series in 1 over volume or in pressure with various virial coefficients. We look at how the uh, different how these different uh, coefficients and parameters can arise due to the interactions between individual gas molecules. We then briefly look at statistical mechanics, how we show that the probability of a given state being observed in a particular molecular system is proportional to what's called the Boltzmann factor e to the minus beta e, where beta is 1 over the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. The normalization constant here is called the partition function, which is the sum of the Boltzmann factor over all of the states of the molecule. The partition function has all of the physical properties of a system embedded in it, just as was true for a wave function of quantum systems. We can do things like taking various derivatives and logs of this partition function to calculate any property we want, including the most important property that the average energy is the negative partial derivative of the natural log of Q with respect to 1 over KT. We then move on to the three laws of thermodynamics. The first law that the energy of the universe is constant, conservation of energy. So for any system, any energy change of our system is equal and opposite to the energy change of its surroundings. The typical way that energy of our system changes is through either heat or work, work being the negative integral of the external pressure with respect to volume. We also define the function enthalpy, which is the internal energy plus pressure times volume. And we look at things like the enthalpy of transition, the enthalpy of reaction, because the enthalpy is the heat that occurs during a constant pressure process. All right, then the second law of thermodynamics, that the entropy of the universe always uh, stays the same or increases during any process. So we say for a system then that the entropy change of a system is greater than or equal to the heat that occurs during that process divided by the temperature. And in the absolute sense, we can look at a microscopic level that for systems of degenerate energy levels, the entropy equals Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the degeneracy or the Gibbs entropy formula. It's the negative sum over all the states of probability times natural log of probability, or even more advanced expressions in terms of the partition function. For the third law, we show that the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is equal to zero. This allows us to calculate the entropy at any given temperature through either calorimetry or statistical mechanics. And this allows us to calculate things like molar entropy of reactions, residual entropy, and entropy of transitions. Our next chapter is on Gibbs energy and Helmholtz energy. Helmholtz energy A is defined as the internal energy minus temperature times entropy, whereas the Gibbs energy is the internal energy minus temperature times entropy plus pressure times volume. These are important because the Helmholtz energy must be less than or equal to zero for the system during any process at constant temperature and volume, whereas the Gibbs energy for a system must be less than or equal to zero for any process that occurs at constant temperature or pressure. We can apply these things then to phase transitions, where we have a graph versus pressure and temperature of what is the equilibrium or lowest Gibbs energy phase versus these two parameters. The chemical potential is the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of particles in that given phase. And the phase that is the lowest in, in Gibbs energy is the phase with the lowest chemical potential. We can also derive equations like the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, allowing us to see how the coexistence curves between liquid and gas changes as a function of temperature and pressure. 
Looking at liquid-liquid solutions, we introduced the concept of partial molar properties, the partial derivative of that property with respect to the number of moles of a given substance. The gibbs duhem equation, where the mole fraction of a substance times the change in its chemical potential summed over every component in the system has to equal zero. And we used various uh, concepts like Raoul's law and Henry's law for what the vapor pressure of a given individual substance is relative to the vapor pressure of a pure liquid in order to get its chemical potential and predict things about the properties of solutions. Then moving on to solid liquid solutions, we use concepts like mole fraction, molality, and molarity to compute things like colligative properties where the change in the the change in the melting point of a of a liquid is equal to a negative constant times the molality of the dissolved solute and the osmotic pressure in a system is equal to it the concentration of our solute times rt where the identity of the solute doesn't matter in each case just its uh, concentration metric and we look at things like electrolytes as well and their activity and the different types of uh, approximations you can make to get the activity and the properties of solutions of charged ionic species. We can finally take all these concepts to look at chemical equilibrium where the Gibbs energy of reaction is the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the extent of our reaction that we define. The equilibrium constant we get from those uh, minimizing those expressions looks like our standard equilibrium constant from general chemistry, things like partial pressure to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient with the products on the numerator and uh, reactants on the denominator. Things like standard Gibbs reaction energy equals minus RT log K and that the Gibbs energy of reaction equals RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient divided by the equilibrium constant. Then we finally apply this, these concepts of equilibrium to electrochemical reactions where we have, an, we have an oxidation reaction on one half of a cell and an, a reduction reaction on the other half. So actually this would be the oxidation, that would be the reduction. We represent these things in, we can represent them in things like cell diagrams, compute things like the standard electromotive force of the cell, which allows us to calculate the standard Gibbs energy of reaction and do all of our typical uh, equilibrium type calculations while computing things like the voltage that electrons experience while traveling in this electrochemical cell. So these are the overview of the chemical thermodynamics chapters of the chemical thermodynamics and kinetics playlist. Kinetics will be overviewed in, uh, separately in a different video. And all of the links to the individual chapters are located in the on-screen annotations and in the description.